awakening is usually a bitter thing, especially when one tries hard to get back to an erotic dream which is not over. But this seldom succeeds. Everyone dreams, more or less, but few people trust themselves to relate or present their dreams as they are inhibited from making public their perverse thoughts. Now concerning my skin landscapes. These are my protest against the systematic poisoning of our environment. A sick landscape marks men, and my landscapes are nothing other than the transplanting of the human skin on our surroundings. What led me to paint these repulsive children's heads which frighten all women? What scares me most is overpopulation with all its horrifying side effects such as epidemics, mass hysteria, famine, and total environment destruction. For me, the greatest criminals against mankind are those who with the help of religion or false ethics forbid the pill, prevent abortions, and hinder old people from dying a redeeming death. This is Bijan Alam. He lives in Paris and owns several of my paintings. He himself can best explain why he likes and collects my work. Ja, mit ihnen leben und gern haben, das ist so eine Sache. Man, hat, man kann dem Schiss seine Bilder gar nicht auf den ersten Blick gern haben. Ich habe es auch nicht im ersten Moment gern gehabt. Aber well, it's a strange thing to live with these pictures and, and like them. One can't be attracted to these images of Giger at first sight. But the first time I saw them, they corresponded to a certain truth. And I couldn't do anything but buy these pictures with all the means at my disposal in order to live with them. 
on the university. I remember very well how shocked my parents were when they saw these paintings on my walls. But these pictures are not only a psychograph of the artist, they also have a secret hidden beauty to which I am sensitive. I bought this picture because even as a child I prefer surrealists and I have followed Giga's career for a long time. I am fascinated by his technique. This painting differs from his varied variations on penis and vagina. This picture shows a beautiful, engaging woman whose effect is very aesthetic, although she is surrounded by death and rather negative elements. This does not bother me at all. There are, of course, the reactions of my friends who look into my bedroom and say, how can you live with a picture like that? Well, first of all, I sleep under this picture. And secondly, this altercation between life and death creates no problem for me because in this painting, life stands in the foreground, and it is a very attractive life indeed. There, perhaps, I draw a parallel in all modesty to my own life, where the aesthetic is always in the foreground. We bought this picture because it fascinated us and not, as so many people claim, in order to provoke them. This picture expresses everything for me which a woman can feel for a child. Birth, contraception, overpopulation, infection and plague. In any case, we now have no problem finding topics of conversation with people who visit us. They come in and are horrified. In any event, one can do something against the abscesses and blood of the children in Mr. Giga's paintings. That was the Hugler family. I live here outside Zurich in a small row house which belongs to me. My studio is in it and I lead rather a secluded life with the exception of visitors, girlfriends and so on. I like to live alone. I work best that way. I do not like it at all when fans or other interested people come just to see how it looks where I live. have always fascinated me. I have a whole collection of them, particularly handguns. I loaded my own ammunition, molded the bullets, and repaired and altered the pistols and revolvers myself. This went on till I did my military service, and there they spoiled it all for me and took all the pleasure out of shooting. Now, in my paintings, revolvers, pistols, and knives, seem to demonstrate the aggressive character of my monsters.
my work. This is Jörg Stummer of the gallery Stummer and Hupschmied, where I expose my work in Zurich. In conversation with visitors to my gallery, I experience time and again that people ask me, what kind of a person Giger actually is? Is he raving or what is the matter with him? He should go to a psychiatrist. But this is naturally quite wrong because H.R. Giger is completely normal and paints his pictures with great engagement and unbelievable fantasy. At home we have many paintings by many different artists, and when I ask Evely who painted this picture, she says, see, that's by Giger. This is Sergius Golowin, writer and researcher of myths. Etwas ist auffallend, wenn man heute viel Gelegenheit hat, when one has many opportunities to visit country communes in which young people are trying to develop a new lifestyle, one is struck by how often Giger's posters are to be seen on the walls. These people don't even know who the posters buy. The only explanation is that these images express something which is in us all today, something archetypical and primal that we long for or are frightened of. I repeatedly think when I show these pictures to my mother and father, they will be frightened to death. It's odd that I always ask, in spite of my freedom, what do my parents think of me when I paint pictures like this? But as I am their child, it is actually quite natural. What I do must come from somewhere. This is a father who überhaupt kein Begriff habe, was Kunst sei, dass er einen Künstler da zu Weg gebracht habe, nicht? Ja. Ich habe das in dem Sinn. Mm -hmm. Und woher die Fantasie? That a father who has no idea what art is could produce such an artist. And where indeed does he get this fantasy? From the mother, of course. The mother has such a talent for fantasy and so nervous she sees ghosts and such things. Or perhaps not yet. Of course, this fantasy is connected with an overdose of hormones at the time of nursing in infancy. When they started testing these products, it didn't come from mother's milk alone.
Sometimes, when I look at my paintings, I ask myself, what led me to such things? For example, these strapped-in children who have to play Indians. Children often have to play roles, probably because their parents wanted it that way. Duress of this kind in youth follows you into old age. I still remember very well how my mother packed me up in a kind of overall, which closed with a lot of buttons or a zipper at the back. This caused difficulties when I had to go to the toilet. I despaired when I realized I could not shit and piss at the same time because the construction of my suit only allowed one of these activities at a time. So I had to squeeze both of them in and wait until evening when I was freed of my straitjacket. Among the elements which repeatedly appear in my paintings, it is above all the worms and the snakes which horrify me most. And I think to find a worm in excrement or vomit is the most horrifying thing I can imagine. In my pictures, worms take the form of technical elements such as tubes and hoses, and that reminds me of this. Once at Easter, I had to look after my grandmother's grave together with my mother. When turning over the earth, a thick worm crawled out and I thought, my God, that's part of my grandmother. I let the spade fall and ran out of the graveyard. My pictures exhibit a color scale of white, brown, gray. Actually, a very unhealthy, gloomy, pale world. An inner world in which the colors have rotting innards, sprouting potatoes, and decaying corpses. On the other hand, I love nature very much, the sun, the woods, and the mountains. architecture, but dropped it when I realized how little freedom you have. Then I went over to interior architecture, to industrial design, but gave that up too, because you have to adopt yourself to human proportions. So I began to paint my architecture and inventions, and today I get it off on a two-dimensional surface.
Grenassages in the galleries are a big occasion for the artist. At last, he has the opportunity to show his work. He hopes a lot of people will come and admire it. The people come, drink the wine, glance at the pictures now and again for politeness sake. People meet and want to be seen. For me, these events are always a little depressing. I pour out my entire inner life for them, vomit myself empty, and what do I get out of it? At the most, a look at a few beautiful women. That is the only thing which interests me on such occasions. That's why I prefer to exhibit with other artists, where everyone shows two or three pieces. Then you are not forced to admire your own work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.